What's up everybody, Jared here with Smoking Android and I wanted to do another video on the brand new uh, or updated Neutrino ROM 2.2 uh, from Notorious over at XD Developers. Um, so don't worry Atrix fans, I, uh, I still have my device and it is still my top favorite. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in and take a look. <clears throat> Alright, so uh, upgrading from um, Neutrino ROM version 2.1, you'll notice that, um, well, one of the big major changes that uh, Notorious has actually included in this uh, ROM update is um, the ability for uh, HDMI uh, landscape mirroring. And actually, it's, it was really simple and, and it's um, um, nice and painless to do. So all you would do is literally just uh, chuck in your HDMI cable, hook it up to um, your TV or whatever, and it, bam, just like that, it uh, displays on the TV. There's no dicking around you have to do, so that was very nice. As well as, um, I'll post a link in the description below for this. Let's see if I can focus this for you. But you'll notice that I now have a um, an HDMI sound uh, switcher type thing. So once you have it plugged in, you just go ahead and hit that, and um, then you just uh, focus, uh, and you just tap that, and the HDMI um, over the sound, uh, it, it switches automatically for you, so that was kind of a nice addition. Um, now, what else? Uh, he's made some other changes, um, but uh, starting from the top, um, you know, the ROMs always come with a really nice, uh, simplistic theme for it with some nice ICS animations. Uh, it comes with the MIUI camera, which I'll show you right... Where are you, camera? Right, there you are, on the first page, of course. As you can see, it's... Let's see if you can see anything here. It's nothing nothing too spectacular, pretty pretty simple. Um, but uh, that is MIUI for you. Um, what else? He's also done some Wi-Fi and 3G tweaks. Uh, he's increased the Dalvik cache to 250 megs. Um, uh, what else? Uh, he's inclo included a V6 supercharger. Um, full GPU rendering, so uh, basically the GPU, the graphics processing unit, basically renders everything as far as, uh, as far as I understand, uh, everything sort of um, on the graphics ends of things, so everything from this to web browsing and games and so on, so uh, it's supposed to rely just on the GPU, which frees up your CPU, as I understand it, for other processes like application running and stuff like that. Uh, what else here? Um, kernel and networking tweaks. Um, he's uh, he's done a little bit of tweaking with uh, faster Wi-Fi and data, and um, kernel efficiency. And uh, I'm gonna go down. Sorry, I'm just reading off the website here because he's done so much over time here. Um, you know, he's done little things. Edited the LCD backlight brightness a tinge. Uh, one thing that he does uh, that he has done, which I thought was pretty cool, was increase the volume. Uh, from steps uh, from 7 to 15 and media steps from 15 to 30 so you know basically when um, you're going like this and turning up the volume up and down on media and whatever um, he's giving you some different increments here um, that he thinks uh, is useful so what we're gonna do is go ahead and demonstrate really quickly the HDMI landscape and uh, as well as the, um, the app here that changes around the sound for you. So give me a second here and uh, we'll get the cable and hook it all up for you. So as you can see, uh, my TV is displaying no signal at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. If you can see just like this, throw that in there. And oh yeah, and I suppose I should probably hit the input button on the side of the television. Give me a second. Input, oops, input, and uh, shoot, how do I do it? There we go. That should do the trick. Anytime now. And there it is. So as you can see, not only it's in uh, portrait, but uh, we can switch it over and it's immediately in landscape mode. Um, I don't know why my, I think why it's all looking weird like that is because of the... Um, live wallpaper that I'm using right now, but I like to use this live wallpaper as sort of a demonstration on um, you know how smooth the ROMs run, so we'll get to that in just a minute here. But uh, as you can see, it, uh, it does work quite flawlessly. It was literally just plug and play um, 
for some reason I haven't been able to figure out why, but it actually does cut off a bit. I think it might just be because of the uh, resolution. I'm not too sure, um, so I'll have to look into that later, but this is just to prove that it, it does in fact work. And um, so we'll go ahead and I will press, and I'm gonna show you with how the, um, the uh, sound application works here. I'll just go to a YouTube video. <clears throat> We'll go to, um, well, I suppose it doesn't really matter. Uh, what's this? Um, actually, we'll go to one of my YouTube videos. Uh, um, I don't know what I'll type in here. I'll scroll down, see if I can locate one of my videos. Come on, where are you? There it is, the unboxing video. Now, this is just on my phone right now. As you can see, Motorola Atrix has a really nice screen as it is. But also, you can see the uh, media increment steps are um, a little bit different. I have to hit it a lot more times. It's sort of big, chunky, you know. Anyways, so we're going to go ahead and I will show you what it, how easy it is to um, turn over the uh, sound for you. So just literally hit that button. Go ahead back into the YouTube video. Go ahead and play it. And I suppose I should probably turn up the audio on the TV. There it is. And it's just that simple, guys. Okay. So, as I was uh, just talking about before, I just wanted to go over some of the um, performance, uh, the noticeable performance enhancements that comes with uh, Neutrino ROM from Notorious. And um, obviously, we want to take a look at smoothness. How, how smooth is the device? How does it handle with you know web browsing and loading up your gallery? I mean, these are all big issues, especially when loading a, or um, using a live wallpaper. So this is actually a really good way to um, demonstrate it. So you'll notice that um, I actually only <laughs> use one home screen, as many of you may know, but just for the purpose of this, I added a second one. So as you can see here, the transition between home screens is flawless. There's absolutely no lag and no stuttering, no hesitation whatsoever. Um, with that, especially going into your app drawer and back and forth, you'll notice how smooth it really is. Dragging down the, the uh, notification bar and back up again. Um, a lot of phones that I've played with in the past seem to have an issue with um, um, as soon as you turn off the screen, and uh, you know, unlock the device. You can't. It doesn't register your touch right away when you, if you want to check for um, a notification of sorts. So it's nice to see that um, it's very smooth like that. Um, and I'm sure the 1.3 gigahertz overclock kernel um, helps with that <laughs> as well. Uh, so we'll go ahead and check out some web browsing. Uh, the capabilities of this. You can see it loads up quickly. I am using Wi-Fi at the moment, but um, nevertheless. Um, all right, so let's uh, go ahead and let's head on over to all of our favorite website, XDA Developers. We'll see how quickly it loads up their home page. So, I mean, that was that was really quick, really, really quick. Um, you know, I'm playing, uh, I'm actually reviewing right now the LG Optimus 4G LTE, and um, I gotta tell you that the web pages do not load um, even half as fast as this does. So, uh, um, you know, it goes to show how quick and uh, zippy this ROM really is. And so we'll go ahead and test out the pinch to zoom capabilities. It's not too bad as you can see. It's um, actually a lot smoother than uh, most stock Android phones. We'll go ahead and zoom in on some um, content that's as deep as we can get. And we'll do some scrolling. As you can see, it's just flawless, nice and smooth. Whoops, camera shaking there. It's an earthquake. And um, we'll go ahead and uh, double tap out. And nice and quick, especially with all the flash content loaded up as well. So I was really happy to see that. Um, well, to see that. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at how long it takes to load the gallery. Um, I'm, I didn't really take a look ahead of time, so hopefully I don't have any uh, nudie photos of myself or my wife. 
So that wasn't too bad. I would have liked to see the gallery load up a little bit quicker, but it could have been because it wasn't saved in my cache. We're going to do a quick speed test here. Um, hopefully uh, we'll be able to see some performance improvements with the, with the new tweaks. So we're looking at right now about 17 to 18, oh, 18 down. And close to three up. Um, I can tell you that uh, my up speed is, you know, r uh, reasonably higher than it has been in the past. However, I didn't notice a huge jump uh, with the uh, with the down speeds. So we'll go ahead and um, continue on. We're going to do just one more test. It's going to be a, a benchmark test with Antutu, and uh, we'll go ahead and end this video. Okay, so at the last second I changed my mind and decided to go with Quadrant Standard as they've released a new update for it that supports um, dual core phones. So uh, we'll go ahead and jump in and hit run full. Okay, that was taking too long to load up so I went ahead and <laughs> cut it through. Um, as you can see, uh, our device has reached 3643, so 3643 on the... Uh, on the Richter scale there. Um, not really too impressed with uh, Quadrant Standard's um, benchmark results there, so we will, in fact, go ahead and try and 2-2 two -two next. Okay, so we are about to start our and 2-2 two -two benchmark test, so let's go ahead and test. Yes, do all the good stuff. Let's see how this baby handles. Oh, choose SD card, what the heck? Come on, Neutrino ROM. Uh, boy. We'll just choose that one. Okay, so the test is done, and we have scored six, uh, sorry, 6340 uh, at, you know, 1.3 megahertz, or gigahertz, if you will. So we'll go ahead and um, ch score chart, and let's see where we are on this. So as you can see, Motorola Atrix, just below the HP touchpad. I'm assuming that's probably with um, custom ROMs and things like that. But uh, anyway, so that didn't do too poorly. Anyways, that's also with, um, as you can see, uh, what's that? 18% battery life left. So um, as far as I'm concerned, that's uh, that was pretty darn good. Submit. And yeah, well, that's not too bad. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and look at some other things like the dialer. Pretty basic. Um, I actually like the nice simplistic look of it. So uh, all the tabs up there as you would expect. See, I'm popular. I get emails too. And um, hmm, what else can we take a look at? Maybe let's take a look at some of the preloaded apps on the device itself. Um, also, I just wanted to point out for those of you that are experiencing some flash issues with uh, any CM7 based ROMs, uh, go ahead and download Chainfire 3D from the Android market and just install the drivers. You don't need the pro version. Basically, it'll uh, start flashing some certain drivers on your phone, which um, um, sometimes comes broken in uh, Cyanage Mod 7 ROMs. So, a uh, little tip for you guys there. So, obviously, DSP Manager comes with it. Uh, what else? Pretty basic P Droid. Um, I know it's kind of difficult to see because of the white background, um, but that's basically Privacy Droid, so you can set uh, privacy permissions for any apps you download. Um, anything else cool? Mm, new videos application, which seems to load up music as well, so I'm kind of confused about that. Um, also, I do recommend the um, uh, same settings as me for this ROM. If you're using the 1.3 gigahertz uh, kernel version of this ROM, come on! Oh shoot, stop it. Um, if you're using it, then uh, get yourself some uh, set CPU action. Go ahead and set yourself up a profile, a screen off profile with um, you know maximum I have, actually this is wrong, I should have it set down to, I have mine set to 456 and minimum 
216. So um, when the screen's turned off, it runs minimal. So we'll go ahead and save that. Oh, and set the priority to 100%. So uh, that'll help you save battery life dramatically. And, um, well, basically, that's it, everybody. Um, I hope you like this uh, sort of long review, if you will, of Neutrino ROM 2.2. Um, I know that uh, Notorious has been a little bit slower in releasing updates. When he does, though, if there's anything broken, he's really quick to fix it. But uh, at the moment, he's actually working on Cyanage Mod 9 for the Motorola Atrix. So you're going to have to cut the guy some slack there. He's doing a fantastic job of keeping up, uh, keeping our Atrixes up to date. And um, in my opinion, this is the best ROM for the Motorola Atrix um, if you don't like the Motorola Blur um, feeling that some of the other ROMs give you. This is definitely um, full of speed. Um, it looks great. Uh, it handles great. Great battery performance. Awesome multitasking. And um, everything works. So that's basically it, guys. Thanks again for watching. And um, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And uh, if you have any comments on this particular ROM, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, everyone, the Smoking Android signing out.